they are the sons and even the daughters, if we, if we expand the understanding of that scripture, of the Most High. And in this regard, the first in this succession of five sermons, the first one that he gave, I knew my family, my uh, joy in, in India, and even I believe young Minister Lair will be able to attest to this. The first one he gave, I knew I was going to have to speak. I didn't feel like speaking. So I don't owe, I feel the congregation an apology. I had to apologize to the Most High because that's where the time got beyond me because he said what he said and I was like, and I even, I think, mentioned to my family briefly, I said, uh, he's going to give me to speak and I don't want to say it. Right. Right. Not that I'm afraid. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. But sometimes the mantle of what we have to carry to impact this world so that his kingdom come and his will be done, cousins Joe and Vanessa, sometimes it's heavy. Uh, because we unduly oftentimes carry a weight that is not supposed to continue to be carried once we release that weight and we free ourselves and we pour out on this people who now the, the onus of that burden is up to each and every individual. Now y'all don't have to get scared and that mean that we're just gonna take the next hour and just rip y'all apart. But this is something poignant, and I knew after talking to the prophet that whatever the Most High said that we must say, that we had to do it and had to do it in the time frame in which he's called us to do it. Shabbat Shalom to those of you all who are meeting us online. So for the time that is mine to speak to you today, thank you, my brother, Dr. Rodney Smalls, I borrowed that phrase from him. We go directly to the title of our text because there is so much word and scripture content within the sermon and within the text. The title of our text is simply titled, We Don't Have to Build It As We Fly It. Thank you, Brother Billy. We don't have to build it as we fly it. We're building it as we fly it has become a common modern phrase that is, and in my experience of it, has been based in both politics and in entrepreneurial and business exploits. Right. Basically, what they're saying is we're making this up as we go along. Mm -hmm. We're figuring it out. As we're constructing it, uh, we don't have the final schematics or design figured out, but what is important is uh, we're learning as we go along, we're being trained as we work, we're figuring this thing out metaphorically, we are flying or building the airplane as we fly. Now one of the things that is so profound about this whole statement is that Unless technology is coming far more advanced than what we have experienced thus far, we all know how many people in here this uh, morning and those online, we can't see you raise your hand, but how many people have been on an airplane before? I don't think any of us want to get on an airplane anytime soon where the people are hanging off of the fuselage, Secretary Davis, still attaching the wings to the plane as it's taken off. I happen not to be, and let me sit and watch this clock because my time is limited today to speak to you, so I don't want to blow me too far outside of the text, but I've got to explain this because it means everything with regards to the body and to the intrinsic center of the meaning of the text this morning. I'm not Tom Cruise, I admire his gifting and his capability, his training, that individual may be one of one in Hollywood, whereas all of his stunts, if I'm not mistaken, he does himself. Yeah. 
That means that when you see somebody literally hanging, and it's not CGI, Brother Jordan, it's not the technology that they infuse through, and that stuff is becoming impressive with AI and things of that nature in this day and time. But let me tell y'all, it is not CGI technologically inserted, Sister Griffin, you know, uh, something that is mimicked and caricatured of a computer program when you see him hanging from the airplane you know, two Mission Impossibles ago, that was him literally hanging from the outside of that airplane as it took off. When you see him in the latest movie, which I've yet to peruse, but I've seen the trailers, fall off of the cliff and jump off of the motorcycle and then begin the parachute system, and that's, that's him doing it, it's not a stunt double. I'm not called to that type of work. So, I'm not necessarily or not even necessarily, I'm not looking to be on the airplane that's being built while they fly it. I'm not trying to be a passenger in first class when they're testing out the first uh, transcontinental Madam Brown flight via AI, meaning it ain't a human nowhere to be found. I know that most of the autopilot conducts the flights in this day and time. But I'm telling you, if they get into some kind of weather pattern, I want somebody that's been in the Air Force <laughs> helping to make a decision. I'm not gonna give too many examples because that's how I monitor and manage the time this morning. Y'all get, y'all catch my drift, you get my point. I'm not trying to be on a craft that's being built as it's being flown. That thing need to be complete. That, you know, they need to have the system checks in place, the screws retighten, Brother Joe, and everything. Listen, the flight attendants need to know exactly where the drinks are. Right. Well, that's right. Because at least for Shepherd Man, I want a complete build of that plane before we fly. The question this morning beloved, is how do we discern, recognize, obviously we're utilizing this phrase in its title of our text as a metaphor or as an, an analogy, as it were, uh, to put in worldly, corporeal, carnal, or more simpler terms so that we can clearly understand what the Holy Spirit is saying to the body ecclesia today. The question this morning is how do we discern recognize or properly determine what is right, proper, or correct as believers in this day and time. Now we got to get this word off of us because I received the mandate from the messenger of the Most High last evening, which largely the Most High had him call speaking about himself. But it was words, because I'm not one of those people that's dumb, deaf, and blind spiritually. I don't have any of you all particularly in mind because I got all of us in mind. I don't have to survive three car wrecks before I ask the most high, what have I done for you to put me in a position to be in a wreck? Some of y'all, y'all start three revivals and praise breaks saying, isn't he good? You haven't even begun to ponder why you are subject to such near life and near death experiences. It don't, there's not an accountability bone in you that even remotely has you thinking that maybe I'm out of pocket, maybe this is my own equivalent of Noah or Jonah rather in the Leviathan. No, all you are spouting quite possibly is look at the mastery of his grace. Yes, that is a quotient and quite possibly, Lady Joy, a part of what's going on, but why don't you, if I'm not talking to you, don't take it by a face, but I'm talking to the body, because there's many people in the body, it never really comes to them. There's no predilection that says, maybe I need to take inventory. Well. So the question that we pose to you this morning because we've got another message via the prophet of the Most High that we've got, and it's a confirmation because just a month ago, I'm digressing, I'm gonna get back to the point. We were sitting here maybe two months ago and we started out one of our Wednesday Bible studies and y'all know Shepherd Man went on a spiritual route, uh, rant, talked about uh, current events, do y'all recall? Talked about the news, 
and the Holy Spirit said it's time for the body to begin and everything is a confirmation brother Wilson's question that will continue Lord willing this coming Wednesday is a confirmation my Catholic cousin bless you Mark Jones in Detroit Michigan I haven't even shared this with my family it's began to send me clips obviously from the vantage point, Madam Brown, and from the denominational construct that he's a part of, but he's been gassing. Why is this man, all of a sudden, I was, y'all was in rehearsal the other night, I believe it was Monday, and I started, either Monday or Thursday, I started getting a succession of video clips. And I was like, now this man, do, do, I, do we have to knock heads again and everything like that? Because I believe he believes in exactly true principles, but just from the perspective that my late uncle, helped to instill and he began to follow his father and he has carried that mantle. So in many regards, it seems like myself and he calls me his brother, my brother cousin as it were. I'm not trying to sound like, you know, some kind of hillbilly, you know what I'm saying? But he said, we're more of a, uh, we're more like brothers, at least from his purview, than cousins. So I'm gonna call you bro. Ain't no strange stuff going on. No strange arrangement, praise the most high. But he, so, so, being an intellectual himself, we've crossed paths, but a lot of stuff, Sister Griffin, we're diametrically opposed with regarding because he's trying to usher people, if you'll just allow me to explain, please explain briefly, he's trying to usher people back to the first corporate construct of any church coming together, or ecclesia, uh, after Christian persecution in the beginning of the common era. And I'm trying to point out the problems that have laid a foundation for why we have denominational trouble in the first place. So there's somewhat of a disagreement but hear me he began to send me clips and the Holy Spirit said before you lash out inquire of what this is for I vow why is he doing this he had the same message that was encapsulated in this young minister's question he said Lord what are you trying to confirm he had the same message that my brother prophet Scotty confronted me with last evening and it's the same makeup of what we discussed, what I largely ran about and what we talked about a couple of months ago. It's like believers need to begin to wake up because we have to get into position to fulfill the roles that we're going to fulfill in the latter day. That's another study that we haven't released, but it's gonna be released soon, I believe, because we gotta get on a biblically orthodox page, orthodox page with regards to how we've been told the rapture or the catching up or taking away of the most highest people is going to occur in the latter days because what's commonly among Christ and God is that there is going to be a catching up of his people so that they can escape the end time tribulation, which I'm telling y'all right now, email me later because this is not the message, is not biblical. However, if we're not going to miss so much of the end, but the end, what we can properly discern, ends us in the battleground of Megiddo, in the final battle of Armageddon, side by side with Christ and his battalion to ultimately overcome evil for good. How do we survive to that point? How do we survive in the face of the onslaught of the enemy rolling out its agenda that the enemy is laughing with hilarity, cousin Vanessa, because the objective is with the blindness of the world that nobody, we touched on it before we ended on Wednesday, nobody is going to be able to escape what the beast and the dragon has put in place. It is all encompassing and we're subject to its systems, its world systems, but yet we survive to fight in the end. How do we do it if you can't eat? How do we do it if you can't train? How do we do it? Y'all, I'm not trying to go and teach that, but y'all understand where I'm coming from. That must mean that he has critical people in place. He has systems in place. He has entrepreneurs in place. He has farmers in place. Y'all gotta put on your faith cap if you understand where I'm coming from. He has locations and land ownership in place to preserve his people through such a time. But they're not going to know how to act and to get things in order if they're asleep like we're asleep now. 
If we're on TikTok, rather than preparing for a day where we have to tend to one another. Yes, sir. I know I'm not trying to find your TikTok. I said last evening in the conversation, a revival is coming. Scotty said, let me do you one better. It's not that we don't agree. Said, it's more like a quickening because the people are already revived. They've just got to come to life in recognizing that now it's time to put this in place. Wow. Now let me say this before we move back to the text. Let me watch the time because I want to be time conscious. If there is digital currency, I'm not prophesying. I'm posing a theory, Sister Griffin. How do you know because he is the most high of all? How do you know that with the world's right. taking fiat currency away from us, and when you think about blockchain and how it's designed, that's one of the reasons why the government still don't have a hand on it. I read an article over a year ago where they were reaching out to the world's greatest hackers. If you can unlock the tenets of blockchain for us, and, they, and, and, the, and the front, Mr. Billy was, so that we can stop how, in, how, how evil and criminals are paying one another because you know they freeze assets in this world that are in conventional banks but you can't freeze the assets of somebody that's doing stuff on the dark web that's operating excuse me largely in blockchain so we need to be able to decipher this technology and have a backdoor and a key to it so we can go in and so that we can let me just save time so we can have all power so y'all can't even run from us in blockchain how do you know there's not a technology Similar to the Silk Road, you've got to go back in history to understand where I'm coming from. That preserves and allow, allows believers to tend to one another and to barter and exchange in this last and evil day so that we don't have to be a part of the beast system. And yet he still preserves us until the final war. See, a lot of times we limit the most high. I ain't, I'm not trying to give up on the Holy Ghost, Secretary Davis, just because E.T. Lane. Right. Right. He's all powerful. I just got to take into consideration that, oh, y'all from Mars. Huh? Right. That don't mean he don't still sit on the throne. Right. Y'all don't feel like I done lost my mind, so let me, let me go back to the text. We limit the most high's yes. capabilities. Yes. I don't know if he created the angelic order. They fly around and they uh, go in and out of the spirit and corporeal. You got to read Genesis to understand what I'm talking about. Right. If that is such a thing, then why can't we imagine that something else is living and intelligent? Right. Right. But I digress. So the question this morning is how do we discern or recognize or determine what is right, proper, or correct as believers because right now I done lost most folks not just y'all once again if this is not for you if you're walking in a line with this principle if you in the amen corner didn't say that but somebody needs this because somebody was stuck when I just mentioned your new body fellowship ecclesia which is TikTok <laughs> wait a minute now you done missed all of that revelatory stuff because what's wrong with TikTok Proper behavior and decorum. What is it today for the believer? Correct attitudes and disposition. What should we adopt as believers today? Proper faith assignments. What should we be working on today? If we were to look at the world as it currently stands and critically examine society as a whole, I believe that it would lead most observers to the same conclusion regarding Christendom's current impact on the world. Currently, how is the church, in so many words, impacting the world? Which is <sighs> that if Christ is having any impact on the world at all these days, it certainly doesn't appear to be positive in the macro sense of the world. Some of y'all like, I'm, I'm not coming next week. I'm tired of these depressing messages. Hang in there. We're going somewhere with this. And maybe that is simply, watch this, the fulfillment of Scripture. So, y'all can relax for a second because, oh, so you ain't saying it's our fault? 
Some stuff is not the fault of why it seems as though the body ecclesia is not impacting the world. Some of it is meant to be because it is foretold in scripture, foretold rather in scripture. For example, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 22, where the Christ utilized a parable, or in the modern sense of the word, an analogy, to explain to the chief priests of Judah, Caiaphas, and the order of Pharisee gathered among him at the time, how entry or refusal of entry into his heavenly father's kingdom would work. And in verse 14 of Matthew chapter 22, the Christ exclaimed that many would be called, listen, but few would be chosen. Once again, a reality and an, and, and an eventual reality of what is going to happen to the world, not necessarily the fault of mine or yourself. Y'all following? Also, in the second letter to the Faith Assembly at Thessalonica, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Paul the Apostle wrote in an explanation regarding how the fulfillment of prophecy would occur concerning the end days and the return of the Messiah, stating the following, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Meaning the Antichrist, are y'all following? Who opposed him and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, if y'all don't feel like that this message is necessary, how in the world is the beast, the Antichrist himself, going to end up pastoring our churches? Will somebody wake up so that I can get done? Hello, somebody. We just read it. I didn't make it up. This is not designed to be got you. I didn't get word. And this is a specific uh, arrow or target at any one or individual of you all. We just read it from Paul the Apostle's Holy Ghost inspiration that we're not going to recognize that it's the very end until Satan's minion is the head of the church. I didn't make up something. Once again, the verse is Thess uh, the Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verses three and four. So maybe we are near the end. That would explain the generally godless state and condition which the world has devolved into. Or maybe y'all just live in a neighborhood where everybody got the Holy Ghost. But as far as I'm concerned, and what I know is what I see out there, it is dark, is it not? So maybe we're close to the end, I'm about. Not to depress y'all, but just for us to be able to see the signs and to read the tea leaves and understand how we need to act. But that's not the overwhelming point this morning. What would explain, beloved, the confused at best, generally apathetic, meaning I don't care one way or the other, attitude and disposition of many, if not most believers today? I'll wait. Not too long. It would appear that most folks that claim they have faith don't seem to believe that they have to adhere to any particularly godly principles that will sanctify this is exactly true for ministries. Words mean something. Yes. Or in other words, set them apart from the rest of the world. Right. In fact, there's a major push against folk in the body. I'm not trying to control y'all. There's not a set of catechesis that's coming after this or rules by which to be a good little member of exacting truth. We're just speaking the truth coming from on high. There seems and appears to be a great pushback against us actually differing from the world. I'm not talking about what you eat, per se. I'm not talking about where you go, what you look at, who you interact with. Because that would be too simple, beloved. Let's not differ from the world at all. Let me ask y'all a question, and I'm digressing. Let me get back to the text because my time is limited, and I still got a lot to say. How are folks supposed to differentiate the kingdom from what they're going through? Let me, let me say something that may sting, but it's true. And it's not 
that we're sitting up having all of these discussions because once again, we've fallen into the trap of the world. I'm, I, I had to rebuke Brother Wilson, a loved one this week. I'm like, what you mean your grandfather passed? We family, how did I, I said, I, I've been telling people lately, would you please recognize the shepherd man? Only an avatar. I, pre I remember, I preached one week, so there may remember this, in the pandemic, and I'm old pain. I started getting old, slated your old emails tied to my Instagram account. Because I'm telling y'all, more people than the 12 people that show up in the account. And no, I'm not. I don't count no more. It's been a long time. I just preach in front of whoever the Lord puts in front of me, Minister David. But I started getting emails from an old Gmail account tied to Instagram because people who I didn't know from around the country began and found an accessible elegance page that's been dormant for years now. Because I mentioned that if it was about me, I got, and, and, and I don't know, some half of them may be bots now, I don't know. But it was thousands of people that was on that page following a natural effort to try to launch a business, a fashion business and things of that nature. But I also gave inspirational messages because I said I was a man of faith. Instantly people jumped and found that and started leaving DM messages on the old Solera Man exactly, uh, or I'm sorry, Accessible and Elegance page. But he took me off of, for the second time, major time in my life, off the internet. I don't know what's going on with y'all, but I tell you what, you ain't got to worry about uh -huh, somebody judging me in the house of faith, because even in exact and truth, some of y'all folk, the stuff that you post, how somebody that's suicidal gonna be able to determine that they can get help past your dildo posts. And we better not address it because at the end of the day, the standard is, listen man, we supposed to be like the one, we, we, you know, what you, don't teach stuff like that, you're gonna try, the place is already empty. We supposed to be emerging from control, don't try to control me, so I'm just asking you. Because we found out that it's been, and this ain't gonna be the whole thing about what the message is about. What I'm saying is, when somebody had to tell you if you weren't on the internet, listen, what? And you don't know who's mentioning it because the internet is for the world. The saints is putting some of everything. That's just one example. I can talk about stuff on a diverse basis where are we using our Holy Ghost understanding with what we're portraying to the world when, the, when we the person, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it, whether you feel like you care in the mantle or not right now, you are the person that's got the information that's going to save and unlock salvation in this last and evil day. It's a different, it's two different things between what has been placed on you and what you feel like carrying. I hope somebody is praying. I told y'all, I'm tired of picking with y'all. I'm not scared. I just didn't want to preach it. Mark, I worked on a message, and it's coming, about light. It's going to blow y'all mind. Maybe we'll get a chance to dance for, for once this year. I vow. Because y'all have no idea. The, the Holy Spirit began to unlock Sister Griffin when I did a deep dive into light. We didn't think that there was empirical proof of God. Let me not get distracted. Because I feel the presence of that right now. Do y'all know that the origins of light proves that there's a creator? If you don't know, we're going to teach it. Stay tuned. If you can survive this message. So that was me. The Holy Spirit said, you got to deal with the spirit ain't spirit. Y'all going to understand that in a minute. The spirit ain't spirit. You know, the modern colloquialism is the math ain't math. It, meaning, basically, Brother Joe, stuff ain't, ain't making sense. Beloved among the body of Christ, the spirit ain't spirit. And what's supposed to work to set us apart and sanctify us ain't working. And Sister Griffin, I said, no, I don't, I don't feel like it. These people, you pray for your servant, because sometimes even pastor can still be in the flesh. I admit it. I'm like, I ain't scared of these folks. I'm just, I'm, I'm, don't, 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 sit there no more now. I'm teaching on light. So I end up 20 minutes late because the Holy Ghost <laughs> come through my head all this morning. You're going to speak this message. <laughs> you can't run. It don't really. Can y'all tell? I love y'all, but can y'all tell? It don't matter if you ultimately. I gotta go somewhere where I'm not under constantly attacked. Let me tell you what Scripture says, because we're going and progressing towards that day. 
You're going to go to that place where you feel like that you ain't under attack, and that rock is going to say, we can't take you in. Yo, we got to bring down the relationship, because y'all have no idea. So y'all think y'all understand that you can duck and dodge what you know. You think that that don't apply to you. They're going to run to the rock. What are they running to the rock for? If they in cooperation with the latter-day uh, beast and the Antichrist, then they ain't got to run nowhere, because the world is theirs now. So who's running to the rock seeking shelter? People who have a certain understanding that are trying to outrun the severity of the day that they're in. But what you know and you carry, it ain't going to be nowhere you can run. That's why this is not a hateful or an angry or a depressing message. This is letting y'all know that it's time to be quickened. Come on. Because we're going to have to put things in place in preservation of the light and the truth. And you can't just binge your way through whatever. Yes, because what has been strategically placed in us, time check, has to come into effect. Yes, Jesus. We're going to have to do our own trucking. Yes, I'm just on the Holy Spirit right now, y'all. We're going to have to have, we're going to have to have our own farms and vegetables. And I'm not saying that it's going to react like that movie that scared you when you were, you know, you can't eat unless you take the mark. I'm telling y'all that there are plans in place. This is what the prophet called me with yesterday. There has to be, I told the Most High I would obey the Most High. Not obey my brother, but what he told me. He said, we're going to have to start telling people because it's the Spirit. He said, because I'm somewhere doing my own thing. And the, and the Holy Spirit said, seek for a Sabbath service. I couldn't find one. And he said, so but I had to call my brother and we're in service now. He said, we got to tell people that another thing is getting ready to be rolled out. Y'all forgive me on that. Some people already done took it off. He you done know, went off the deep end. But I got to do what they'll say of the Most High. Yes, dare I say maybe another phase of a pandemic or something even different is coming because that's what they utilize. Y'all know we've taught on behaviorism. Get people to do stuff that they normally wouldn't do themselves. Then it's irreversible. Right. So another adage from the government is don't waste the convenience of a crisis. That's how we get major moves. How y'all think we get Social Security? The Great Depression of 1929 and World War II coming out of it. These people ain't saving for themselves. We're going to have to save for them. Now, y'all don't understand what's going on. It basically, the fund has been depleted because at first it was a lockbox. Right. Then they started borrowing against it. Right. Right. People have tried to protest. It, it don't work. Let people set up private savings or direct it this way or whatever. But you know what? We have not rolled, about, rolled back any major entitlement uh, legislation in the history of this country. So good luck, good luck people who don't like Obamacare or Obama. I, I'm not trying to get into politics. I'm just saying, if you feel like it's faulty, we don't roll back handouts. And you see what happens when we do it partially. They acted like um, abortion was rolled back. It just got kicked back to the states where it was eventually. But they're like, oh no, it's got to be national and international. People is having a fit. They're made, the Republicans don't know how they're going to ever get reelected again. Because they put people on the Supreme Court that started fiddling with stuff that was in place. Whether it's for the good of the nation or for uh, largely the fruits of it don't seem like it's fruitful. I vow we don't reverse stuff that we put in place. And you know why? Because it takes the people to cooperate with what? I'm not trying to, to deal with y'all pro or anti work. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just using an example. Y'all understand where we're coming from so that we can continue to move on? All right. And they need a crisis so that people will agree largely for them to give away their liberty. Prophet said, there's a plan. Come on, Auntie Maggie. Prophet said that there's a plan to replace organic meat. Now, I read the article, but not give you a choice, Joe. There's a conspiracy to replace organic meat with lab meat. Now, I haven't read up on it, so I don't talk about Brother Jordan's stuff that I'm not versed in, so I'm not going to act like I'm an 
an authority on it, but I, I have seen in Peru's brief articles, myself and Joy have talked about it casually. But the prophet said, no, 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 you gotta look further into this. Sister Griffin, he said, because the objective is to wipe out organic animal life and the consumption of it. Now, how many of y'all wanna go now? We getting ready to go, God grant us safety and we gonna celebrate, so I'm getting ready to shut up, auntie. But well, we getting ready to celebrate, auntie. And listen, I'm not going, Vanessa. If the sausage on the table, I'm not saying we're going to eat some of y'all, man, I ain't eating pork, but whatever, sir, I ain't going, Joe, if it come out with a tag on it. And I'm going to go, but somebody pray for Shepherd Man. Let me check this time, Jay. You got to put your phone up and, 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 and scan the barcode before you eat. The meat has a name. I'm Samantha. I was made in the lab and next to the CDC in Georgia. Enjoy. No! Daughter-in-law never thought the day because I love it. I'm a car-carrying member of Peter. People who enjoy tasty animals. I'm still going to be me, even though I'm glad y'all can smile because before we get done, some of y'all may see, either want to cry or fight still, but I'm, I'm in the middle. Let me get done. So, beloved, what's very confusing is how is the world going to determine the difference between where the light is when the light is trying to put itself up under a bushel? Right. After all, as explained in Matthew, we live through the word in Matthew chapter 5, our principal responsibility as blood-washed believers is to serve as the light or illumination for this world. The salt of the earth, a city, or in other words, a beacon of hope, elevated or placed upon a hill which cannot be hidden. You are not, let me go back to the example, you are not embarrassing exactly the truth. It is not to hold to account somebody who has an activity. Play. It wasn't even me, Pastor. That is, that's shady. Listen, how are we going to hold people to account for folk that ain't been properly discipled? Y'all right. know I'm not about that. I'm not about going after the children in the school district when they got good and well parents that are not tending to their, um, what's the word called, uh, a, a former principal, to their truancy. I'm going to stop my car. I've been in the city. I'm not aggressive so much. I'm going to get done with this. I've been in the city. I've been wondering, why, why aren't these teenage men at school or at work, one or the other? But the Holy Spirit says, shut up, because their parents in some way don't care what they're doing. Right. I'm not trying. I, listen, if people are putting up crazy posts and they, and they attach to us, I'm not trying to police them. If, they don't, if they're not carrying a mantle for the most high, nor do they understand it, you know what I'm saying? Then you know what? The, the last should be first and the first should be last. The problem is with the people who should be pastoring them. Right. I thought that was you. You know, the pastor's starting the homes. Right. Yes. Amen. And some of us are pastors and don't want to be. Sorry, you can shake your head this many times. It don't take away what you know. Right. You can run to that rock once again. All y'all gonna do is be frustrated because when you, because I'm already subject to it. Sister Griffin knows because she was in that position a little while ago as well. We go to these other places, try to shine a light, sir, and we gotta pray hard because the, the folk is just as crazy as I don't know what. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. The title of the text today, the sermon is ha. Is how are we supposed to survive this last and evil day, Vanessa and Joe? And, I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to go somewhere with high? If we ain't talking about high, then forgive me. Some of y'all don't feel like I'm social enough. But we color liberation theologies. And every Bible character, if somebody is Joe Biden, uh, who, who is this? I guess Thomas is Sleepy Joe. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Just run for office. Because folk is fighting live in the synagogue because there's nothing growing their spirit and advancing their character. Let me move on. I gotta move on. Holy Spirit is telling me to move on from this. Beloved, from my purview, the modern body 
of the Christ has began to resemble the wild, wild west. After all, as explained in Matthew chapter 5, our principal responsibility as blood-washed believers is to serve as the light or illumination for this world, the salt of the earth, a city, or in other words, a beacon of hope, elevated or placed on a hill which cannot be hid. But we're the wild, wild west today. There is constant conflict, seemingly daily duels among fellow believers. Some of y'all will rush up and fight me if you could right now. And you ain't, and you ain't even putting crazy stuff online. It, you can't embarrass exactly true. I love y'all all. We've all sinned and fallen short of the kingdom and the love and the glory of God. You're representing you. I'm lovingly saying that the next part, you may be traveling with somebody that's going to need Holy Spirit insight. And they're going to think about you on the way in like this. And are not going to ask you. It's just common sense, Mark, why you seem like you just as turned out as me. I got to find somebody that, that, that's, that's walking different, Billy. Y'all don't like me? Come on, Pastor. You are not your own. You can't go everywhere you want to go. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. I'm sorry. Right. I, listen, I admit it. I'm the, I was the first one who had to confess before any of us did that. I didn't want to I didn't want to teach it. I want nothing more in many regards in my flesh. Lord, crucify this blood to just leave y'all alone. Mm -hmm. Look, Mark Davis, I'm speaking. Is, and it's true. This is still true. And it's up to them to do what they want to do with it. But we got to get ready to, to combat some of that. Because the government is laughing at our version of dedication to the Father. The enemy is looking at the status in which the body of the Christ is standing in the world and saying there's no better time than to, to take their money away and roll out Samantha, the smart meat. Let me get back to the message. And somebody has got to activate to begin to protect the measures and the provision of the Most High to usher in a time so that the Messiah can come back. Fiery swords in hand and win Armageddon. All right. Let's give me a few more minutes. From my purview, the body of Christ has become a wild, wild west. There is constant conflict, seemingly daily duels among fellow believers, and a growing sense that anything and everything goes or is acceptable to our Heavenly Father, which has never been the case. In the Hebrew book of Leviticus, I'm not speaking in my own mind. This is not 1219 control. This is the this basically the reason why it's not as admonishing as it seems is because it is a call to remembrance. This is the beginning of our quickening. Somebody say quickening. Quickening. Forgive me, but it must, it must be a reason to prove a point in the message today because we didn't keep with our tradition today. You're going to understand why I said that in just a few moments. In the Hebrew book of, Le of Leviticus, the Most High spoke through his messenger Moses to convey to the children of Israel exactly what offerings and sacrifices would and would not be acceptable, acceptable to him. Why don't we know what goes and what doesn't? Why do we have to get rules and catechesis from the pulpit and fall out with one another? Why don't you as a believer or a chosen child just know what's acceptable and what's not? I'm off the internet now because now we know none of us need to feel like that we escape because some of your stuff is just not, it's a revolution, it's just not being televised. In Leviticus, he told us what would be fit. What would be kosher, as it were, and what would not be? For his children, children of Israel at the time, up under the law. Then he commanded them to practice it so that it could be preserved because they weren't writing a lot of stuff down. So it became, are y'all following the word? It became a practice. It became a discipline. It wasn't his choice. Well, you know, uh, up until recently, grapes and, and fruit, Lady Joy, you know what I'm talking about. It didn't seem like it was good this year. So we're going to switch the chips. So I got to get done with somebody, Secretary Dave. And then when you get clogged arteries and the doctor is like, well, you used to be so healthy, but all of the fruit was bad this year. So I decided I had to eat something. Well. You, you don't, we don't need to be attacking one another. If we're purveyors of the word, we know what's lawful and what's not. Right. Right. You want to attack a preacher. 
um, church here. Let me stick to this because I, I, I got to get done in the time. Then he said, we got to get on the road. And in the Gospels, we live through the word. The Christ exclaimed emphatically that those who truly love me will keep my commandments and feed my sheep. Why are we doing some of everything online for the world to be confused, thinking that we're right with them? And why aren't the rest of us that feel like that we're saved because you like Trevor Man, you largely ain't online, but you ain't been more fed a sheep, a donkey, or an anvil? I'm not talking about exactly the truth. I'm addressing the body. I'm talking to people that's online today. I can feel the energy that's of the people that's in the house here, but I got the weight of the globe on us with regard to somebody who's been called to tell the truth to the body. And if we're all that fruitful and impacted all those many lives, why are the very communities that our houses of faith sitting in in such despair? Y'all better quit lying to yourselves. Somebody complimented me. I don't have nobody in mind. Or, you know, so if y'all feel thrown off against, just realize that everybody's being thrown off against, even me. I, somebody wrote me an email and said that I was really a light on the job. Y'all stop fooling yourself that you're having the impact that you're not. Because universally, the body of Christ largely is a joke. What you got to say about that? I know it is because the winds haven't turned the tide towards people desiring weightier matters and stronger meat joke like a place like this. They still rather go where everybody is misrepresenting the, the kingdom in front of the world and it's accepted. What an extra bass and, and wonderful high pitch notes. So what is the explanation behind this modern collapse of standards and principles that appear to have become the rule rather than the exception among today's body of believers? Well, I'll tell you. I may not possess every single explanation, beloved, but a major reason for these deficiencies amidst the body, if y'all was upset before, Joe, go to the car and get me a bulletproof vest because I'm getting ready to really get in trouble because I don't see you often, but I love you, and I, and, and, and I feel like that at least your heart is open to this. I feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me, so you might have to take up for cuz today. Because if this was tight to here prior, I ain't even really got to the stuff. I may not have the full explanation, but I'll tell you. A major reason for these deficiencies amidst the body is the failure to hold in high regard, to observe, recite, and to place into literal practice sacred scripture. You hear that, Sister Brown? You hear that, Mark Davis? So, we can leave one another alone. I'm not, I just use those people, for example. I'm not talking to them directly. I'm talking to everybody. Yeah. Then now it's not Pastor picking with you, or now it's not you picking with Pastor, or not, it's, the, it's to a great degree. Who are you going to be with in judgment? If you can't rely on nothing or nobody, you have his word. Right. Amen. And we have not largely, Sister Griffin was trying to warn us for the last couple of weeks, we're not adhering to the word. That's good. It is the believer's primary failsafe against how Satan masquerading as an angel of light amidst our ranks, against charlatans misleading us, and dogmatic theories and teachings steering us askew. If we all were faithfully adhering to sacred scripture, then we would realize that there would be no need to build what we now refer as his church, or in other words, the plane as we fly it. Oh yeah, it's open code and doctrine. This year, we may be outreaching, but next year we might find out that we ain't supposed to feed the hungry at all. You know, we just, we, you know, we just want to adjust as we go along. You know how the world kind of flows with it? We gonna, we gonna rock and flow. That ain't never been scripture. Amen. There are certain things, I'm gonna prove it, that everybody that proclaims to be a blood-washed, grace-given child of the Most High King, it, that's why I'm anti-denominational. It's not because I'm prejudiced, it's because there's certain things that should align us in principle all. That's why I'm not discounting my Catholic cousin, who the most I, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. So he sent these clips. I'm going back. 
because I got I went another direction and didn't finish the story. Real quick. So the Holy Spirit said, don't lash out at cuss, ask him why, Sister Griffin. He said, similar, two days prior to Scott, there's something coming that we have to be prepared for. And there's a different way we're gonna have to pray. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned, cuz we'll talk more about it in the future. Mm -hmm. I said, well, this man of God got a word, even if he is, <laughs> from time to time, at confession. You know, in the booth with the thing sliding, talking about, Father, forgive me for what I've said. It's been three days since my last confession. Because just like the Zoroastrians, the Persians, who had the same word that the Messiah had come, seeing the signs in the sky, having completely different faith. I'm not talking new age. I'm saying that we're losing principle. Because we don't realize that the same father is, is still, despite Babylon, is still talking to every culture, despite their language and their cultures. We need to adhere to the thing that brings us all together, which is his Holy Ghost. Now let me get done because my time is elapsing. The scriptures contain many direct laws. Y'all know it does. Thou shalt not murder. I'm glad because I feel like killing you today. <laughs> the scripture contains direct laws, commandments, and principles that are not left up to believers' interpretation. They are very plain and concise. Do y'all hear the Holy Spirit today speaking through Shepherd Man? For example, I have proclaimed, I don't go and, can I, I got to digress one more time, maybe three more times, y'all know my ministry, but I got to digress here. Stop letting the devil sit on your shoulder and uh, I don't care. I'm going to be honest. I believe there's a clean way to love one another, those of us that's in committed relationships. I'm talking to all of us that's in them. But I'm not interested in y'all bedroom. Do y'all know that there's things that we should be policing ourselves that's out of scripture? We should have a Holy Ghost that should be leading us? I'm 